Okay, another great day. Another great day to look forward to. Another beautiful day. Hopefully it'll be a day filled with fabulous things. Fabulous news, fabulous things to be happy about, fabulous things to celebrate. We're going to get started very soon. All right, just waiting for a few things. And we're going to get going. Quickly, we're going to get going. Cool. Great. I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, here we go, about to get started. All right, here we go. All right, say hi. Hey, Jerry, how you doing? Okay, welcome. Today, today we are going to be talking about what Israel and the Jewish people have to deal with, right? The title of today's Meerkat is War, Rockets, Anti-Israel UN, and Celebrating Life. I am in the mood to focus on giving an inspiring message today. Looking at what's going on around us, looking at the news, looking at what Israelis have to deal with, and focusing on the inspiring message. All right, so here we go. Israel, the, the, the third commonwealth of the Jewish people, the modern state of Israel, is only, was only established in 1948. Okay, less than 70 years. Less than 70 years the modern state of Israel exists. Okay? The Jewish homeland exists for thousands of years. But the modern state of Israel only exists for less than 70 years. Now, uh, in these 70 years, do you know how many wars Israel has gone through? How many times our enemies have attacked us and tried to kill us? We had the War of Independence, 1948. We just came into existence and the world attacks us. To try, the, the, sorry, the Arab world attacks us to try to destroy us. Then we have terror attacks from, from, from mostly from Gaza from 1948 until 1956, 1967. There's the 1956 a war, 1967 a war, 1973 a war. There's war after war after war. The Arabs keep on attacking us to destroy us. And then throughout, when wars didn't work, they turned to terrorism. The Palestinian, the Palestine Liberation Organization, the PLO, established in 1964, before Israel liberated Judea and Samaria. When the wars didn't work, they turned to terrorism, right? 
Hello, Justin. Welcome. So we're focusing today on the reality that Israel and the Jewish people have to deal with, which again, we're titled uh, Wars, Rockets, and Anti-Israel UN and Celebrating Life. So what's the connection? All right, so, so the inspiring message is, first of all, focusing on what Israel has to deal with, what the Jewish people have, have had to deal with. In less than 70 years of existence of the modern state of Israel, we have had so many wars to have to defend ourselves where our enemies have tried to destroy us in all the wars. The conventional wars didn't work. They turned to terrorism, and terrorism has been going on for decades. You have children who are educated by their parents, by their schools, by UNRWA, by the United Nations to kill Jews, to destroy Israel, to one day return to their homes. This is what Israel has to deal with. The United Nations, time after time, anti-Israel resolutions, time after time after time. Just now the headline news of the latest United Nations uh, report about Israel, basically equating Israel, a sovereign country trying to defend itself, with Hamas, a terrorist organization, trying to destroy Israel and going against all international law and using terrorism, using their own civilians as human shields, and yet the United Nations report that just came out equates Israel with Hamas, a terrorist organization. Horrible, horrific. So you think, any country in its less than 70 years of existence, constantly fighting having to defend itself on the battlefront, on the streets, constantly fighting having to defend itself on the international world stage of the United Nations, constantly under attack by the world, constantly under pressure by the world. So you'd think, oh my God, the people there, oh my God, it's horrible to live there. Well, they're, they're dealing with so much, they're dealing with so much pressure, they're dealing with so much violence. How is it that they live there? What kind of country is that? And yet, just late, just recently, there was a, a, a report of the happiest countries in the world, right? The people of the happiest countries in the world. And the people of the country of Israel come out as the 11th happiest country around the world. There are lots of countries in the world. The world is big. And Israel comes out, Israelis come out as the 11th happiest society, the people in society, a number 11 out of the whole world. So you think to yourself, how can this be? with everything the Jews in Israel have to deal with in its short existence and still today, every day having to deal with the pressures of enemies, of trying to, to do horrible things to us, using violence, using terror, using diplomatic means, using the international forum of the United Nations, using the ICC, using the International Criminal Court. News every day is about what's going on in the world, putting pressure on Israel and focusing on, the, on, on how bad Israel is and Yet, our people in Israel, the 11th happiest country in the world. So what is it? It has to do with celebrating life. It has to do with Judaism. It has to do with part of the DNA of the Jewish people, celebrating life. No matter how bad things get, we are always celebrating life. Now, I don't know how many of you have Jewish friends I don't know how many of you have celebrated Jewish events or Jewish holidays in the Jewish life cycle, but we have a lot. There's a Jewish calendar, a special calendar that's different than the, the, the other calendar. We have our own months that are from the Torah, from the Bible, and our calendar year, almost every month, is filled with life cycle events to celebrate life, to celebrate the historic moments that the Jewish people Ex uh, went through and experienced. Our purpose every day is not just to focus on the now and to celebrate the now, but it's to focus on the then, on what happened back in our history. Remember it, relive it, celebrate it, be thankful for it, and also in that way celebrate the now we have so many holidays throughout the year that we celebrate it's part of our dna we have so many prayers on a daily basis 
that through our prayers, we're celebrating life. Through our prayers, we are focusing on reliving the experiences of the collective Jewish people through the millennia and being happy in remembering what happened then to refocus on what happens today. Okay, we're going to go even, even further into Judaism's focus on celebrating life. In the Torah, we learn and we are taught that there's a special pasuk, a special verse in the Torah that says, V'chai bahem. We're supposed to live by them. Chai is live. What is it talking about, live by them? With the commandments. Jews have 613 commandments we are supposed to follow on a daily basis. Not all of them are applicable every day, but whatever commandments are applicable, we're supposed to follow. Okay? The Sabbath is a commandment. Uh, taking care, uh, respecting your parents, elders, that's a commandment. We are supposed to be doing all these commandments every day. That's part of Judaism. It's part of our life. That's part of our DNA of the Jewish people. And one of the verses in the Torah says, V'chai bahem. We're supposed to live by them. We're supposed to live by the commandments. So the rabbis in the Talmud, they're, they're, they're grappling. What, what is this talking about, V'chai bahem? And then we come up with another important uh, uh, precept in the Torah. And that is that there are only three, there are only three commandments Jews are allowed not to do if someone has a gun to our head forcing us to do them. What does that mean? Meaning, if a, if a bad person puts a gun to your head and says, do this or die, then out of the 613 commandments, the Jew has to do 610 of them, right? To do these things that are forbidden for him to do. And only three of them, if the person, if the bad guy says three things for the Jew to do, only three of them can he not do and instead be killed. Okay, so we'll get into that in a second. But you're thinking, wait a second, Judaism is about the commandments. Judaism is about listening to God. So if someone bad comes up to you with a gun and says, do, do this or die. So for 610 of them, we're supposed to do them because we're not supposed to die. For three, we're supposed to be killed and not do them. Okay, so first let's focus on the three. The three horrible things we're supposed to not do, even if someone has a gun to our head, is what's called gilu arayot, illicit sexual relations. Sexual relations, someone comes up to you with a gun and says, have sex with this person, and it's forbidden to, then we're not allowed to do it. We're, we're supposed to be killed instead of doing that illicit sexual re relation. The second thing is avodah uh, zarah. That is, you do idol worship. Okay, meaning if someone comes to your, gun to your head and says, worship this idol or worship this thing that's forbidden for us to worship, we're not allowed to do that. We're supposed to be killed instead of doing that. And that is through why throughout generations, as Jews were forced by all different religions, and for many centuries it was the, it was, it was the, Catholic, it was the Christian world that said, uh, if you don't convert to Christianity, you will be killed. Many Jews were killed instead of converting it to Christianity. Because the Torah explicitly states that one of the things we are not, we are supposed to be killed instead of doing is to be to, to convert, to leave Judaism, not to believe in God. So we said illicit sexual relations, a person is supposed to be killed instead of doing it. Uh, idol worship or believing in other God if someone tells you all of a sudden to do that. And the third thing is to kill. Someone comes to with a gun to your head and says, kill that person or I'm going to kill you. You are supposed to be killed instead of killing someone else. Okay, Those are the three things Jews are supposed to be killed instead of doing other things because those are so important. But yet, there are 610 commandments that if someone comes to your, a gun to your head and says, do this or be killed, we're supposed to do them. We're supposed to go against the, the commandment and do those things instead of being killed. Why? The rabbis teach us because the verse in the, in the Torah and the Bible that says, v'chai bahem, you're supposed to live by them. Because in essence, God gave us the commandments. God gave us this Torah lifestyle. God gave us Judaism to celebrate life. All these commandments we're supposed to do are supposed to help us celebrate life. So even if someone comes and says, go against your commandments, go against your Torah, go against God, in 610 out of the 613 
commandments in the Torah, we're supposed to go against the Torah. Why? Because the most important rule is to live by them, to celebrate life. God gave us all the commandments to celebrate life. Only in the three instance, instances of extreme, extreme cases that really go against our being as Jews and what the Torah represents for us, are we supposed to be killed. But in, for 610 commandments, the vast majority out of the 613, we're, we're, we're not supposed to be killed. We're supposed to do whatever we, we are initially not supposed to do in order to live by them, in order to celebrate life. Because the Torah, the Jewish existence is about celebrating life. Because by celebrating life, we bring God into the world. We bring God into our own world. We bring God and the goodness of the world into our environments. And that's how we help and bring life and goodness to all around us and to the world. So it's in the DNA of the Jewish people to celebrate life. It's in the Torah. So if you know, someone says, wait a second, how are, the, how are the Jewish people in Israel today? The 11th happiest country. People, the Israeli people, the 11th happiest people in the world with everything they have to do with, with everything they have to deal with, with all the wars, with the constant terrorism, with the constant bashing from the United Nations and international forums. How are Jews so happy? How are the Israelis such a happy people? Well, that is why. It's part of the DNA of our, of, our, of our religion, of our Torah, to celebrate life. Um, Gracie, thanks for retweeting. You're still not getting notifications from Meer Meer Meerkat. I'm so sorry, but uh, so stay in contact with me. Follow on Twitter. I hope you get the, the retweets. I have someone here saying Shalom from Romania. Shalom back to you. Thank you so much for joining us today. So we're, again, we were talking about wars, rockets, anti-Israel UN, and celebrating life. And the question is, with everything Israel has to deal with, with the constant wars that our enemies wage against us, with the constant terrorism they wage against us, with the con con constant international pressure and anti-Israel attitude, like the current anti-Israel United Nations report equating I Israel with terrorists, that we can't, we, the, the Hamas can dig tunnels and use rocket fire against us just as we defend ourselves, which is ludicrous. How are the Israeli people such a happy people? And it's because it's part of our DNA to celebrate life. Life is short. We don't know how short or long our life will be. At any given moment, someone's life can end. Thank you so much. You from Romania, we're standing with Israel. We appreciate it. And we hope this information is getting out there for all of you to enjoy. But as I was saying before, life, life can be so short, you have no clue. One minute you could be living and happy and enjoying your family, and enjoying your life and bringing and doing good. And the next minute you could be crossing the street and all of a sudden your life can end. We do not know how long we have, but we do know that we have the moment to make the most of that moment. We have life celebrations. We have family celebrations. We have so much to be happy about. And if there's anything Judaism teaches us and us, the Jewish people, and that we bring to life in our own country, in Israel, with everything we have to deal with, is that you try your best to focus on the good, to focus on the celebration, to focus on the thankfulness for what you have. At any given moment, there is always what to complain about. There is always what to feel bad about. But why waste your time focusing on that? Why waste your time focusing on the bad? Israelis could use all their time and focus and be angry. The world's against us. The Arabs are trying to kill us. This is a terrorist. And they could close themselves up and just be upset and just be sad. But no, we don't let that get to us. Come to Israel, folks. Come and witness the vibrancy of life in Israel. Come and witness the celebration of life that takes place every day.
Yes, people go through hard times. Yes, there are people who are also sad and not everyone has a smile jumping around singing Kumbaya in the streets. That's not the message I'm trying to give across. Israel is a normal country with normal people with, with normal hardships and you see that also. But overall, the overall attitude, the overall feeling in the country is a feeling of vibrancy, is a feeling of life, is a feeling of celebrating life and of happiness. And the miracle of that is that that feeling exists even with everything we go through on a daily basis. Everything we go through from the violence that our enemies go give against us and do, that's the international world forums, the news every day is the United Nations doing things anti-Israel, the hypocrisy, the anti-Semitism going around the world that can make us feel sad. There are all these things that can bring us down as a people, that can bring us down as a nation. And sometimes they do, and sometimes we have to take care of it. But even with that, our focus is to celebrate life. And it comes from the DNA of the Torah, of the Jewish people, of Judaism. Focus on being thankful. There's so much to be thankful for. You wake up in the morning and breathe. Be thankful for that. You have family, you have parents, you have children, you have a spouse, you have siblings. Be thankful for what you have. Why waste any precious moment complaining or not appreciating what you have? That moment will never return again. That moment just went. So why waste it? Take advantage of it. The, the most, one of the most important messages the Torah and Judaism give us is to be thankful. We are to be thankful for everything God gives us and therefore we're supposed to be thankful for everything everyone gives us and everything we have. Take advantage of saying thank you for every little thing. Bring over happiness to the people around you by being thankful. Because all of a sudden they're like, wow, he thanked me. It really wasn't such a big deal what I just did, but he thanked me. That is beautiful. That is the celebration of life. So folks, that's the inspiring message of today from Israel, from the Jewish people. And this is something that is applicable to each and every person in the world and to you as well. Just challenge yourselves, even with everything you're going through, okay? Israel is focused on defending itself from daily terrorism, from daily attacks in the press, from daily attacks in the international, uh, in the international forums, the United Nations. Every day there are headlines that are against Israel or, or, or putting us down. But yet, we challenge ourselves to raise above that and focus on celebrating life, on enjoying our families. Celebrate every moment. You know, I started off earlier explaining that the Jews have a Jewish calendar from the Torah, actually different months, and the days are different, and it has all the Jewish holidays. Well, that means that any Jew has two birthdays. A birthday on the, the the secular calendar, right? Whether January, February, March, April, May, and a birthday on the Jewish calendar. So I'm a big believer that I've been blessed to have grown up in two different worlds, grew up in America, now live in Israel, that I do connect with the secular calendar, even though my true connection is the Jewish calendar. But yet, hey, I just inherited two birthdays. I have children. Every time any one of us has a birthday, we celebrate the Hebrew birthday for, on the Jewish calendar. We celebrate the English secular calendar. Why not? We were just given a gift. We have, we have another thing to celebrate. Their approach is to take advantage of life, to celebrate life. Celebrate every moment you can. Celebrate the people in your life. Appreciate the people in your life. Be thankful for everything you have instead of focusing on what you do not have or what is missing. So today's inspiring message from Israel is look towards Israel. Look towards Israel as a light that if Israel with everything it deals with can still be one of the happiest countries in the world, well first come and see it for yourself and enjoy it and celebrate life with us there. But second of all, be inspired by us, be inspired by Israel that with everything we go through, you have hardships too. Everyone has hardships. Nobody has an easy life. 
Everyone is unfortunately focused on their own and it makes them get down on themselves thinking that they're alone. No one else is going through what they're going through. Well, that's true. No one is going through what you're going through, but everyone has their own story of what they're going through. So instead of focusing and bringing yourself down on what you're going through, go through what you're going through, feel the sadness, feel depressed about it, that's okay. Thank you, Gracie, saying what a great message. I appreciate your feedback very much. So that's okay to focus a bit on, on what you're going through, not to ignore it. You can't deal with it if you ignore it. But while, you're, while you internalize the sad things you're going through or the hard things you're going through, allow yourself to overcome that and focus on being thankful and, and, and appreciating and celebrating what you have to appreciate and celebrate. And if at any time you have that hardship of, of doing that, well, just look to Israel and think, wait a second, the Israeli people with everything they're going through, they could do it, then I can do it too. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone, today. Have a great day. Have an inspiring day. Do everything you can to bring happiness and the celebration of life to everyone around you. And next time you have the opportunity to celebrate life, someone else is a celebration, you're invited to something, no matter what mood you're in or what hardships you're going through, try to overcome that moment and say, you know what? Life is greater than me. Life is greater than this hardship I'm going through. Life is more than just focusing on why I'm sad. Let me celebrate life and overcome that hardship and go out, put yourself in that uncomfortable situation and it, you'll make yourself happy. You'll make everyone around you happy because that moment won't return. That moment to celebrate will not return. So don't miss it. Everyone have a great day. Shalom. And may all of us, with all of the good we bring to the world, help make this world a better place. Great day, everybody. Thanks for joining.